Hi, everybody. You got to see like the last nanosecond of the intro, so let's run it again. Okay, now I'm in the mood. I needed, that, I needed that other nanosecond of intro to be able to get on here with everything. So uh, welcome, everybody. It's Friday night. It's the Cool Crone Oracle, and I have my friends with me to be able to do some readings for you tonight, which I'm very excited to do. Um, as if everybody doesn't already know this, I did go to Watertown, New York to see the eclipse, and it was amazing. It was cloudy. And um, I did one short, I tried to upload another short and another and another and another, and they all failed because, you know, Mercury retrograde. So my daughter said, send them anyway. And I'm like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the moment has passed, but I got a lot of views on that first one. <laughs> so Good. Maybe I will. But um, it was funny because if you put on your eclipse glasses and looked up at the sun, it blocked out all the clouds and you saw an itty bitty little sun, which was cool, but you couldn't really tell how much of the eclipse had come to pass. It just still looked like a round disc until right as it went exact, I had my glasses on, I was watching it and you could see the little uh, 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 ka-ching and it went in and it was just like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, and everybody in the park just kind of went, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I think we all sat there going, oh, for the whole three and a half minutes because before you know it, it moved out and everybody went, oh. <laughs> yep. I missed it. Yeah. And so three and a half minutes went like that because everybody was just kind of yeah. dumbfounded. But it was it you could see the actual eclipse, especially if you put on the eclipse glasses during that exact moment. And it was it was wacky. I mean, seeing seeing that kind of zing into place was just like amazing. Yeah. And the birds, I took videos of the birds because for the but half hour leading up to the main part of the eclipse, which was really when it started to happen was about a half hour, about 45 minutes before the birds. And these were not tiny birds in this park. For some reason, they were seagulls. I think there's a lot of waterways up there because this is right on the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. And um, these seagulls, first of all, were mammoth. They were gigantic birds. I don't know what they put in the water up there, but they're very, very large. And um, they didn't land in the trees. Now, there were trees all over the park. We were on top of a mountain, Garrett Mountain in, in um, Thompson Park. And these seagulls were just flying around crazy, crazy, crazy. They wouldn't land in the trees. They would land on anything but the trees. They would land on the picnic benches. They would land on statues. They would land on, there was a big, tall light pole. They would land up there. In fact, I took a video of these two seagulls who seemed to be kind of coaching the rest of the seagulls <laughs> two of them were together and they would yell in unison at all the other birds. It was, <laughs> they're just like, rah, rah, rah. You know? I was like oh. illegal, illegal. Don't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. they, but, but the birds just went bananas. They just, they didn't like that yeah. energy. <laughs> it was just weird. And there were several different shifts of energy. You know, once, once we, as we were going up to the park, that was a kind of a, the beginning of the, of the change of the energy to from like, it's a normal day to, oh, something extraordinary is going to happen. And mm -hmm. then we got up to the park and the people kind of settled in and there was really two, two bodies of people. Those of us that were really at the very top of the mountain for some reason, where they had a cup, they they had a couple of food trucks and they had a live band, but the live band was facing away from us. So I guess we were kind of like backstage, but this was really a great place to be. It wasn't crowded. Mm -hmm. Most of the people were like my age. So I guess this was the retirement village of the, <laughs> uh, of the eclipse attendants. And we, I think we got the best of it because you could go up to the food truck or where they were selling t-shirts yeah. and there wasn't a huge line or anything like that. And everybody was very polite and happy and nice to one another. And I mean, there were families up there too with their kids. It wasn't all, you know, walkers and canes, but it was um, it was just really pleasant. It was really, really pleasant. Mm -hmm. uh, going down the face of the mountain, which was a very gentle incline, all grassy out into a big grassy field, mm -hmm. packed, packed with younger people, just packed. Mm. like a Woodstock kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so we just didn't go there. Um, but the energy changed about 45 minutes before the eclipse again. Mm -hmm. And people started to get like um, kind of hunkered down. Like this is where yeah. I'm going to the eclipse. Mm -hmm. And they were a lot more like the little groups were like in connection with one another. And then, of course, I described when the eclipse actually happened, how everybody reacted. And then when it was over, it was just so mellow. You know, nobody was, it wasn't like, oh, the band stopped playing, so let's all run for the exits. It, it wasn't like that at all. It was just like, okay, well, let's clean up our mess and let's fold up our chairs and let's get going. And just really polite. We waited for like two, two waves of people to leave. And then we went because uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to walk around for a million miles. But it was really nice. And I think Watertown was a good choice for us because they were planning on 150,000 people coming there. Mm. I don't even think they had 40,000 people. Oh, it was good. really nice. It was not super crowded. Mm -hmm. They had plenty of people to help and keep things safe. And they were organized. And people at the hotel knew what was going on. They had nice shuttle services. I mean, it was really nice. And they had some pretty good restaurants, too. So thanks, Watertown. We had a great time. Thanks very much. Yeah, so it was good. So that's my little spiel on the eclipse. I don't have to talk about that anymore. Um, but the glasses were cool. I mean, they really worked. I, I've used them before, but um, this was just, I looked forward to this so much. I was so excited to do this. And it was really, really a nice little vacay for our tiny little family. And it was really a nice experience in general for everybody. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how much my kids were into it. <laughs> it's like, nice. but finally. <laughs> Finally, you're into this stuff. They're way into it's it. Yeah. Good parenting finally kicked it in. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A while, but they finally it finally kicked in. So let's see who we have here in the comments. Oh, we have a few people here. Oh, and good. I have 13 questions starred. And Carol, I have your questions starred. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, what's up with you guys? Anybody? Anything? <laughs> I did. Um, we had the eclipse. We were at about 98.9 .9 or 99% uh, totality. So I did put some, I, I did some magic, um, put out some water to create some eclipse water. And I charged a couple of decks. Um, I did not charge any crystals because all of my crystals were like, eh, we've been through eclipses before. This is nothing for us. So, so I listened to the crystals. So very yeah. good. So, Very good. Yeah. Yes, teacher Barbara, I did get your question. <laughs> so. What did you do? Oh, uh, my husband was a party pooper, and he didn't. He said, "Yeah, seen one, seen them all." <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care. He said we didn't have any glasses or anything, and uh, I had an Akashic record reading right from the time you know, just as the eclipse was starting to the whole entire time I was reading. So, <clears throat> and it was only 70% where I'm at. So I couldn't have seen, you know, that much, but uh, you know, I felt the energies, they were intense. Let's put it that way for me, just before yeah. I went into the reading with someone, mm -hmm. and I felt them, them that way, um, just as energy, um, an energy force hitting me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, and how about after? I know a, a lot of people felt that <clears throat> afterwards they were really feeling sort of like a reaction to it. Yeah, the reaction is kind of discombobulated, a feeling of being out of sorts, not quite your normal self because you're having, it's like shaking up all that stuff <laughs> you're going to get rid of. And you're like going to coalesce and come back together as a whole different, you know, format. Yeah. Um, I don't know yeah. how else to say it, but yes, this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah. really, really. Yeah, nice. definitely felt that too. Hey, Cleo, mm -hmm. did you do anything? You're muted. I am? You're, no, 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 Cleo, Cleo, you're oh. muted. <laughs> And in go. Seattle, we have a 20% viewing. And, of course, we saw beautiful clouds, and it was nice and gray. Didn't ever see the sun. <laughs> let alone the 
I guess some people did travel. I don't know if they went to Eastern Washington or wherever they went, but they did see, they, they claim they saw something. They might have just been imagining things because in Washington, <laughs> really, you didn't see anything. I didn't feel anything. Uh, actually, I was just looking at the clock and I thought, oh, I guess the eclipse already happened. Yeah. Maybe I ought to look it up on the internet. Yeah, I think where you were at, there wasn't there wasn't very much that you could see. But um, the fact that it happened across the United States is mm -hmm. is significant because wherever and and this is true for anything astrological. If you can see the planet, if you can see that fixed star, it's affecting you, and mm -hmm. it's affecting you right then, whether or not it hits a super sensitive part of your chart or not. If it does hit a super sensitive part, then it gets really an experience, an event or an opportunity or something. But just seeing it is bound to um, bring in some kind of experience. And I was really glad I went because this actually hit, hit some pretty sensitive parts of my chart. And I felt like if I just stayed home and pretended like it wasn't happening, that would have been bad. Well, my, my Aries is in my ninth house. What would that do as far as well, that's what you were doing, you know, doing readings and, and yeah, uh, my philosophy, my spirituality. Yeah, yeah my... exactly. Because the ninth house is really <laughs> yeah. you taking your beliefs outside of your childhood beliefs that were taught yeah. to you and experiencing them as an adult, which causes most people to make other choices. Yeah. It's also the belief systems that that affect large groups of people, things like the internet, the you know outer space, um, philosophies, foreign countries, foreign cultures, things like that. So when, when the eclipse is hitting that part of your chart, it sort of gives kind of a supercharge to a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, there's, there's other planets in there too that are um, difficult perhaps, it depends on your chart. But you know, I I wanted to roll with it, not against it. Yeah, because all of them were hitting me. Oh, all right. of them were hitting my chart, so I wanted to roll with it. So, mm -hmm. and Marina, what? How about you? Nothing. Honestly, it was a beautiful, clear, sunny day, and I kept thinking, okay, well, you know, judging by the time, this is when it should hit, and it should, from past eclipses that I, I've seen, it sh should start to get a little darker. So I was busy on my computer working, and I kept checking, and it didn't seem to change. And I thought, well, I know where I am, and, and I'm just a little east of, of Cleo. So mm -hmm. I knew that, yeah, we were not in the path. If, if anything, we were going to get a little bit, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And so I kept waiting and waiting until I looked at the clock and I went, oh, I guess it's over. Okay. <laughs> and that was, that was it. It wasn't until later on that evening that um, I was doing a show with Allie and I stood just before the show, I started to get a headache and I thought, okay, well, maybe that's kind of a little bit of the leftover, but no, there there wasn't uh, there wasn't a whole lot, so I I did what Cleo did. I went on the TV and it was like show me the eclipse. And when I was watching it, when it hit totality, it was the watching it was the same as I think maybe being there. So I went, oh wow, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Imagine thousands of years ago being on Earth and something like that happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you didn't know what it was. No, no wonder there's so many stories and things that go along with mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even this eclipse, all the all the scare stories and the stories connected to religious acts and stuff, it's mm -hmm. just, it's not complete nonsense because it's actually tied to the astrological meanings of a lot of these things. I mean, you know, Mars and Saturn are both in Pisces, the sign of religious religion and, and deep yeah. spirituality. So... I'm not surprised that there were a lot of people who had fear, which is Saturn, yes. and anger, which is Mars, about this eclipse. They're just, just kind yeah. of duh, that kind of makes sense. But again, if it's not, if you're not seeing it, if it's not hitting your part of the country, you're probably not going to be too affected by it. However, Texas yes. had the October eclipse from last fall, and mm. this eclipse cross over it both both times. And they needed it. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Yeah. Texas. Oof. And, okay. um, and no yeah. one in my neighborhood was raptured that I could tell. <laughs> okay. So I was a little disappointed. I was yes. hoping to get a brand new car, you know, a car driving down the street, somebody raptured. Yes. Okay. I know. How, how do you know if somebody's been raptured? Well, apparently they leave, but they, they get raptured without clothing, apparently. Oh. Uh, they're, they're apparently lifted up and all that stuff. I didn't see any. So, but again, this is for entertainment purposes only. Is it like that show, The Leftovers? <laughs> Could be. Could be. That Could was be. a good show. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah. I I would hope that I would be in, in a very expensive boutique store when that happened. Yes. And the salespeople would disappear, and I would go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you added my size in that one. Oh, well, I want that in red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. Well, Gerald, what do you suggest? Do we have a few starred uh, questions here? We should get going. We only have 18 starred. Only? Okay. <laughs> so okay. only. Oh, we're going to get to all that. So, okay. Yeah. So I would say we're going to pause the questions, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, no, Fro Froxy, Roxy, I didn't see you running naked in the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So. <laughs> well, I have video, or it didn't happen. If it's not on video, it didn't happen. Oh, that was her? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Nice, nice ass, I gotta say. That's an angle <laughs> that I don't usually see. There you go. So we have the first three readings. We have our sparkles, uh, Mickey, Steve Watts, and then Jana. Did you want to divide people up? Yeah, I think that we should probably do maybe two people per question. Kind of I do that, that kind works. of thing. Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll do um, Val and Cleo first, if that's okay. I don't know why I always start on that side. Most people go from left to right. I'm going from right to left. What's wrong with me? Nothing. Oh. Because, because I'm interested in that question, so I'm glad you took it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So so going along with your overall theory, Cleo, it's just your guides can, correcting my guides and telling them where I should put my thoughts. There you go. It's a big well, My guides are constantly controlling you. I don't know if you understood that or not. <laughs> I do. I, I do. Mean, it's you, because you're my sister. Um, yeah. You guys yeah. are always, they use you to uh, get things across to me. And then I just <clears throat> tell them to manipulate you to in my best interest. <laughs> and that's, that's my whole purpose in life anyway. So, you know. There you go. <laughs> Wow. All right. Oh, right. So, so we should read this out. Thank you to my, <laughs> guides, to my guides of any messages that can help with my anxiety and fears. That's me and Val, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sparkles, they're they're really telling you to to step back from everything get a better perspective because what they're asking you to do is really unhook from everything around you in terms of the rhetoric and things you might hear on the news uh, dramas whatever is going on that is just not going to be something you're going to going to want to put your awareness on they want you to go within and be calm and know that everything is going to be okay. They're asking you to align yourself with your higher self in that peaceful, calm place. When you are coming from your soul, and I like to think of it right in your heart, but it's really everywhere, but you can think of yourself as going into your heart, feeling your energy there and connecting. And that way you're going to Create that connection of peace, calm, and serenity. Be at peace all as well. This is your mantra from now on. Be at peace all as well. And Cleo? Well, uh, the cards I got don't apply. So, Sparkles, um, 
I am a person that has dealt with a lot of anxiety and fears. And when my guides came around, one thing I have found that I can do anyway is I just tell them out loud what's going on. Like, you know, I've, I've got something coming up that's bugging me. And so I just tell them about it. And somehow, some way, just by talking to them, even though there's nobody there, but <laughs> it's in, you know, it's within, um, it, it's just super helpful. Just letting that go and just let your guides to handle it. Your guides can handle all that anxiety and fear and you just turn it over to something else and turn it over to them is what I'm saying to do. Um, and and I, you know, you wonder if your guides are in on this. They definitely are. This is nothing new to them. They've got billions of people that are talking to them about their fears and anxiety. That is just so common. And uh, they want you to talk to them about it. And the more you do that, you'll see over time. It's just like anytime something comes up, you know, you can just put it out there to them and they will ease your mind. It's just, it's amazing. So that's what I do. I hope that helps. Wow. Great readings, guys. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the next question is Steve Watts. And <clears throat> put it up here. And this one will go to Marina and Gerald. Mm -hmm. So may I please have some guidance on romance for me? There's someone I've recently met who I can't get out of my thoughts. Mickey, XX, heart, 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 heart. Can I just say real quick to Sparkles? She wrote, thank you. I always ask my guides for help and I thank them and do talk to them about it. You're doing the right stuff then. But just believe that you can t turn it over. You can hand it to somebody else. Just, I'm, I don't want this fear and anxiety. Just give it to somebody else. Your guides will take care of it. You're doing the right stuff, Sparkles. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so Mickey, I am getting that this um, this is someone that you have um, had a past with, and you've kind of um, the both of you, I think, are conscious of the other person's energy. I think that they're feeling it the same thing, um, and your your goal now is to um kind of take considerate action uh, um to to look forward to reach out to um to this person and even even if you were to ask them are you getting some weird feeling because i i, I feel like there's a connection that for some reason and i don't normally advise something like that because you know i think that in this day and age, we tend to be careful, but in this case, I'm getting that you should take some conscious steps and maybe reach out to this person and say, "I'm feeling a connection. Are you are you feeling the same thing?" Um, and it it feels like it's um, creation, an expression of a new soul or or something new coming in. So. Yeah, goes against advice that I would normally give, but. Not my job to interpret. So, <laughs> yeah. so Mickey, I got the Ace of Pentacles, which is the start of something good. Start of something good. I got the Six of Swords, which is a transition moving from one side to another, knocking down the obstacles, going to something new. And then I got the King of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We started with the pentacle. We end with the king of pentacles. And uh, I think it's very interesting because under the six of swords, which is a great transition card. I don't know if you haven't dated for a while, but this feels very comforting. This person could be helpful for transitioning. Um, but under that is the two of cups. Hello, mm -hmm. if it's not the one, it's certainly the one for now. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yes. Moving from one to another. And um, underneath the king of pentacles, not really underneath, but, um, <laughs> you know, supporting the king of pentacles is the page of wands. So this could be the start of something quite lovely, 
quite quite lovely um i you know if you you can't get them out of your 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 thoughts i say say hi invite them out for a cup of coffee go somewhere public mm -hmm. just get to know each other yeah. just get used to it and mm -hmm. um um you know i i think that's great i it feels really good um i will say one of the funny things is 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 um <clears throat> I saw it somewhere on on social media. It's a they don't call them a sugar daddy. They call them the king of pentacles. <laughs> nice, very nice. So, there you go, Mickey. Thank you. Great. So, um, Val, you and I are going to take Jana, and I'll put mm -hmm. her question up, and then uh, Cleo and Marina. If you can take Teacher Barbara, that would be great. So Jana says, hello, I don't know if my guides are beyond my sphere of light or have they been in charge? Uh, okay. Um. You know, Jana, I see that you, you know, are going to be receiving deeper insights. And so your connection with your guides is becoming more, um, pronounced. So if you take some time during the day, just some quiet time to check in and ask your guides some questions, you're going to start hearing some answers. So are they in charge? No, you're in charge. You're the one who is driving your vehicle. And it's up to you to listen to the cues of, am I, is this, you know, breadcrumb for me? Am I walking the direction that is going to be in my best and highest good. And this is where talking to your guides really comes in handy because you can really check in with them and get great insight. But it looks like that's going to be happening for you. You are going to, and you, hence the question, it's perfect timing because you are opening up. So give yourself that time. You're going to manifest what you need. <clears throat> so start taking five minutes a day. Sit down and talk to your guides out loud. Good, good advice. So um, I, I felt similar things. I want to add, I think, you know, everybody has a different way of connecting to the um, higher realms. Everybody is a little bit different. You may have been connecting and just not understanding the messages you're getting. Um, for instance, maybe you're not hearing the messages. Maybe you just have a knowing. That's something that is pretty strong in me. And it's a hard thing to trust because you just think it's your imagination. You just think you're making it up. Now, I do have a really good imagination, but I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> so sometimes you have to learn how to trust what that is. And you also have to learn how to decipher what the messages are. Um, you may feel things in, you know, you may smell things or you may see signs or symbols. You may see feathers on the ground or, you know, the, the numbers in different places or you could see dragonflies or you could see, you know, there's different ways that you get messages. So what um, I pulled a few cards, too, because this was getting a little confusing for me. But I think that your decision to hone this ability is really important and that's what Val's talking about is mm -hmm. making a concerted effort to not not be too random about it but to really make a decision that today I'm going to take five minutes in the morning sometime and maybe five minutes in the afternoon or evening and really talk to my guides ask them some questions and then just allow those messages to come back and I say allow because you're not going to dictate how they connect back with you you're going to accept what they give you and then try to decipher it. And that's that's the journey until you get really more comfortable with that communication. Um, you've got some nice cards here. This can be the beginning of a really nice journey for you and a feeling of, I'm going to say, vindication, because you do know that you have psychic abilities and you have been known to make a few predictions here and there but you yourself don't quite trust it. So now you're gonna make this concerted, almost study of what your abilities are, and then you'll be able to trust it quite well. The um, Oracle card that I pulled for you is mm -hmm. Earth Star Activation, Anchoring and Grounded Energy, Isis Energy. Isis is my gal too. 
And um, what you want to do is, you know, make sure that those chakras are aligned and then do a little digging on the Google machine about um, other chakra, more of the chakra system. So there's the seven in your body, but there's a whole bunch that are not in your body. I'll just leave it at that and you'll do your own research. But that's where you're going to go with this. Yes, you're going to be grounded, but you're also going to be sending energy way up into your earth star. And that's where you're, I think that's where you're going to begin to really make friends and connect with certain guides. You're going to have a lot of guides in your life, but the earth star activation, I think is going to help you connect with this ISIS energy, mm -hmm. which is maybe something that you resonate already with. And um, this will take it further. Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, then we go on to uh, teacher Barbara. And that's going to be Cleo and Marina. May I have a reading? So polite. May I have a reading? That's so yes, nice. absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, I did. Uh, I did pull some cards and was kind of contemplating them. Um, I got the the Mystic. I got the Seeker, and oops, and I also got the Hermit. So, your what? What I'm getting here and, and the message is you already have the information that you need. You're just, you're looking for validation. There is no validation. There is, it's um, what, what came to mind was that phrase about, you know, to the believer, no proof is necessary. To the unbeliever, no proof is enough. Okay. So you are already, um, you already have the abilities to kind of intuit things. You know how things are going to go. It's just don't concentrate too much on getting that immediate validation that yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Do it, do it in faith. Do it because this is what I feel. This is what I think is going to happen and move forward with that. You can always contemplate it later on um, with, with the hermit and maybe, you know, go kind of internal, but do things on faith. Believe that it is going to happen and it is going to, it is going to happen. You do have that mystic ability. So allow that to come through. That's what I got. Well, teacher Barbara, I got something similar. It's to believe in yourself and to, uh, and to believe in yourself and to believe in your dreams. And I think that kind of goes along with what Marina was talking about. But I also see something a little bit different for you, that you've been given an opportunity to begin again. Now, anytime it's, they're calling it a fresh start, it could also feel mm -hmm. like a rebirth. And that you, in order to get to this point, you need to stay in the present and don't go to past experiences or things that have happened in the past that might uh, color the, the the opportunity that's coming to you right now with this fresh start. Really, it's really, the cards I got for you are really nice. Uh, I don't think you have any problem believing in yourself. And so look forward to something new and, and, um, and fulfilling, I guess, in this fresh start that you have going on. So there you go. That's what I have. Good. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So, um, Gerald, I'm going to jump the queue a little bit and give you and I this question by Imelda. Okay. Because she asked, she said she'd already had a reading with uh, Marina and Val, so this will work out. You and I can read her. And then uh, Val and Cleo, if you can take the ADUP question. And then we'll come back around to Marina and Gerald to do um, Jenny Berlin. So you're on the hot seat, Gerald. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Imelda needs a little reading for, uh, from us. Well, of course, Imelda. Okay. Um, Amelda, part of, part of what's happening, Amelda, right now 
is, is you're spending a bit too much time thinking about the past. I have the Six of Cups, which nope. is a nice card about family um, and nostalgia. But this is, it feels very much like you're spending too much time thinking about what was instead of what is. Because we go from the Six of Cups to the Four of Cups, which is the card of uh, when you're feeling meh, you're being meh, and you're missing the things. So this card says to me, be careful spending too much time here, um, Imelda. And when you are feeling a little bit like you're stuck, like you're just going to press play on the, um, on the next video, instead of doing that, do something to get your perspective different. I have the, I have the, um, the hanged uh, man feels like you need to just get up and move a little bit in before you start watching that. Uh, and um, I'm also curious as to, um, you've got a lot of emotions that are going on and are you recognizing those and are you honoring those? Because that's really very important. So um, this is um, a lot of cups in this reading. So a lot of emotion in Milda. So I hope that is helping you. And it just feels like get out of the rut a little bit. And I don't know if you're in a rut, but move around, move your body a little bit to give yourself permission. So, so there you go. So um, thank you, Emilda. So that's what I have for you. Yes, try to talk myself out of doing that. Okay. Just started getting out of it um, this week, actually. Good for you. Very good. Okay. Sorry for all my moving around, but what I was getting for Imelda was angels, and I didn't have any angel cards. But I did throw some other cards, and um, what I'm what I'm feeling here, Imelda, is a feeling of one day you feel like you have everything, and the next day you feel like you have nothing. So you literally feel like you're spinning around on the wheel of fortune, like you just can't stop. You just can't really settle in on what do I think about what my life is and what's going on now and what can I do? And the answer is to connect to your angels. Um, another card that I pulled for you was um, the Venusian Galactic Council, star being guides, answer the call, time to shine. So maybe you're sitting on the couch because you should be meditating. Maybe that's what you're doing on the couch. Maybe you're not um, getting up and moving, which you, which would be helpful. But if you're going to be sitting, um, do something important, you know, for yourself. Do Oh, there goes my cat moving everything. Kitty, this is not going to work. You're going to, I'm no, this is not good. But anyway, um, so let me pull the angel card and then I'll deal with my kitty who is bumping over everything. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, here we go. All right, so the angel card that I pulled for you is Archangel Raphael. I'm helping you heal physical challenges in yourself and others. You are a healer like me. And it's, it's very common, I think, for people who are healers to have some particular issue, you know, that they have to heal from. And that helps them move on to a understand what it's like to need healing and have compassion for those who need healing. But also it gives them a very personal bird's eye view of what effect healers can have on people. So they become their own, you know, a unique healer. And that may be what's uh, out there for you and Melda. So, um, Angels are not the only thing that you can connect with. Obviously, the Venusian, what was it again? The Venu, kitty, get off. The Venusian Galactic Council. Mm. New, new friend group, okay? So <laughs> you might try a little meditation, see if you can connect with the Venusian Galactic Council, see if you can connect to Archangel Raphael. I'm sure you can, basically, if you just say, Archangel Raphael, I need you. He's there or she's there. Or they're there. Um, so just try. 
just try a little mm -hmm. meditation, a little trying, connecting with your guides. Even if you feel like it's your imagination and you're making it up. I finally got a way to get this kitty out of here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Colleen Emilda said, "Just uh, I've been praying to him." Good. So Good. that's great. Yeah. So that's really great. And um, I also got another card. This I've never heard of this angel before, but and I've had this deck for years, so that's kind of amazing. Uh, Zana, Z A N N A, and this says, "You are protected from all types of harm. The worst is now behind you. I ask you to relax and feel safe." So if that is stopping you from doing anything, a feeling, a lack of safety, um, call upon Angel Zana and be reassured that you are safe. So you're physically safe, you're spiritually safe, you're emotion emotionally safe, and that Archangel Raphael is there to help you heal. Um, so I think you have some homework there, Imelda. <laughs> I love giving people homework. <laughs> But anyway, I, I hope that was helpful. Okay, so who's next? Um, uh, uh, what did I say? Deb, Val, and, and Cleo. Cleo, right? Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So, uh, so, yeah, so Adeb, um, you wanted to ask a question about your lawsuit against your former employer. Should you go forward with it? Um, you absolutely should, but you know, this is not legal advice. So be, you know, be your own counsel on this for entertainment purposes only. They're showing you have um, just calm your mind down, get stable and balanced. Uh, this have patience. This is going to take a little bit of time, but they're all these cards are yes. Um, so really your state of mind, your positivity is going to play a big role. Uh, and you are going to receive some um, compensation from this. And here's the sun showing that great outcome. You finally got the high priestess. That is really using your knowledge, your intuition to make sure you tell your attorney exactly what they need to know to frame the framework of what happened to you so that they can present it in a way that you are shown um, to be an innocent victim. Well, no, we don't like victim. No, I mean, victim isn't good. But uh, to show that you were wrongfully treated or whatever that shows up. There are no victims. We are powerful beings. <laughs> but you definitely want them to know that in some way, shape, or form, you were mistreated. It was in not in alignment with what you were doing there and whether you were let go um, or whatever it was that happened, uh, something wasn't right about it because the, all these cards point to yes, <clears throat> I hope that helps. And um, Adab, I feel the same way. I feel like it is something that you should go through with. However, it can be uh, any kind of a lawsuit. It's just a draining, can be a draining experience. And you do have to have all your ducks in a row, you know. And the law is so um, unemotional. So if it's based on an emotional grievance, you might have trouble with that, but if you get a good attorney that can explain things, which, you know, you would want to know which way is this going to go win or lose? How, how can we, how can we do this? So your attorney or a, a paralegal or somebody, you, you need to talk to those people a lot about this before you want to invest all your time into it, because it does take forever. Uh, the law works so slow, but I do feel like, uh, your grievance is valid, and um, I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what that grievance is, but it does feel like it's valid. It does feel like you can do this if you want to, if you're ready to commit to that kind of time. But it's also another thing that you keep in mind that it is a draining experience. Um, 
you know, and, and sometimes you really have to keep on top of your attorney to get stuff done because you may have a talk with an attorney and think, okay, let's go. And then you're waiting and waiting going, what, ha where are you, where are you, why haven't you submitted something? Where's your briefs? You know, you have to, so keep that in mind too. You have to stay on top of the person that's working this for you. You definitely have to have an attorney. Don't try to do it yourself. And, um, but I do think you have a valid grievance. And um, I think if you get all the right people going, I think it will be in, to your benefit to do this. But it, a lot of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, emotional stuff, you know, because if you if you invest too much, if I got to win this, mm -hmm. don't, do it, don't go into it that way. Go into it, uh, let's clear this up. Um, and not and not invest emotionally into it so much because it does take forever and you have to depend on other people to get the work done. That's why you need that temperance, that balance card, that maintain that. You want to be absolutely have the patience to last because, like Cleo said, those are all factors you've got to factor in the staying power. But don't have a lot of your expectation on the outcome because that really is not where you need to focus. Right. Perfect. Yeah. So, hey, good luck on that. Yeah. Great. So we'll move on to uh, Jenny Berlin, and that's going to be for Marina and Gerald. Perfect. And while we're waiting for Marina and Gerald to get their um, cards and everything in order, I'm just going to say anybody that needs a little inspiration and faith, you can always pray to Pete Buttigieg <laughs> with your own personal Pete Buttigieg Saint Candle. <laughs> he's, he's a very enlightened <laughs> being. Oh, good old. Pete of the burning heart. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's a bleeding heart for a bleeding heart liberal. I don't know. But he sure is darn cute. And it's it's cute. Ain't Pete Buttigieg. And yes, I got it on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> right on. You, you, can, you can buy these stickers for the candles a lot cheaper than the whole candle. And I would advise doing that and then just slapping it on any old candle that you get. It but yeah. I couldn't wait, so I bought the whole shebang. And uh, yeah, Pete is lit in my altar daily and can't tell you what kind of miracles he's brought. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Did you want to go, Gerald? Um, sure, I can go. And um, Carla, uh, Carol, you did not miss your message. Um, okay, so Jenny. I have the Empress for you. You've got something that you're working on, that you're planning, that you're giving your energy to because you want this to grow. And it's not just a, a little thing. It's something larger than your immediate circle. It feels maybe something that's going to benefit uh, your extended family. But this is a really powerful card, especially at this time of the year. When, we come, when we're coming into Beltane, when there's a lot of fertility and a lot of emerging energy, really, really powerful. And that's matched with the Ten of Pentacles. Ooh, it's nice. going to be really, really successful. Um, and, uh, so I'm, that's why I'm also thinking it might be extended family or your neighborhood and, but it even gets better. We have the nine of cups. You are really, wow. really going to enjoy this. This is going to fill you emotionally in ways that you haven't been filled in a while. You're going to feel this great connection. It's going to bring you great pleasure and satisfaction for having done it. It's just going to fill up your well, which has been, frankly, running a little bit dry. The word of advice from the uh, Sacred Destiny card is simplicity. 
Do not overcomplicate it. Just allow it to float, allow it to go, um, and do pay attention. Pay attention to these floating little gifts from heaven that are going to show up and make it even more enjoyable. So, I mean, that's like, woo, good for you, Jenny. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nice. Like, Absolutely. I I think I very, very much concur. I pulled from the uh, Mystical Sisters and I got the um, Luna Moth Goddess and her message is one uh, metamorphosis and um, natural transformation. So I think that what you're, what you're going through right now are are changes you're you're seeing what works what doesn't work it feels like you're you're deciding kind of like okay who's in the tribe who's out of the tribe and you're you're kind of making those um those decisions because there are people uh, um that are part of your circle that do tend to um exhibit a little bit of eris personality, which is a little bit of turmoil, um, discord, you know, people that just aren't, they're just not quite meshing with, um, with the rest of your tribe. Okay. So <clears throat> I think that the, the transformation that you're going through and, and what you're ultimately kind of ending up with is the Lilith. And that is the, um, self-actualization it is empathy you're um spiritually you're growing and you're able to um well I, again i go back to your it's like you're deciding who's in and who's not and you're um it's not like you don't have any emotion in terms of letting some people go you're you're letting them go with lots of love and light, but you're just realizing that they're not serving your highest good, and that you are. There are the other part of your your tribe, the people that are remaining. Um, this is Macha, and she is um, she's the, the protector of the home. She's the protector of the um, um, well the protector and the defender of the home. So your tribe is your home and you're looking after those people that are in there. And it's funny that Gerald said about the feathers, because in this card, if you notice there's birds and they're just the way that they're flying, it looks like they're just feathers that are falling down. So we can um, have this stuff up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So be the protector, be the defender of the home. You're, um, your efforts are going to bear fruit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you Jen, for the question. Yes. Okay. So Val and I are going to take Sarah Perez and then Cleo and Marina will do BD and then Gerald and I will do Bebo. Okay. So hello, everyone. How will my finance be for this year? Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what? They keep showing me money. <laughs> but it looks like, <clears throat> yeah. Um, right now, they. this looks like there's a, some things that are happening in your life and around you you're not appreciating in the full way that you can by way of gratitude every morning when you get up and what you see in front of you. You have a lot of bounty and so getting in that mindset of gratitude would be a great thing to do in bringing forward all of this abundance for yourself. And um, here is the Queen of Swords to help you because this is about someone who has sharp mental acuity and can really bring in exactly the clarity of thought of what you want to bring forward. And along with that, what's going to help is someone outside 
of your, or even someone in your family can help kind of direct you into a situation where you're looking at things in a different way now, maybe seeing things from a perspective of a more grounded way of bringing money, more prosperity in, because I see you expanding, expanding your horizons from that and looking at what you can bring in in a different way. And I really think that you're going to have some kind of transformation coming in. I see a lot of, of um, they were showing me tons of pentacles. <laughs> but this is your journey to get to those pentacles. So gratitude, um, really get clarity of mind and cut through all the baloney and get to the core of what you want because your mind has the ability to bring it in your positive mindset and listen to those around you who are, could bring you really good insights into really grounding it into reality and creating something. And you're going to expand and, you know, blossom and some good things are going to come forward so I see a prosperous year when you go through these steps. I hope that helps. Great. Great. So I have something a little bit different. I have, um, there's a, there, you're, you're feeling vulnerable right now. You're feeling a little bit like you don't want everybody to see what's going on with you. So there's a feeling of keeping secrets and then different secrets and maybe you're keeping other people's secrets. And so there's, it's just a feeling of vulnerability and I equate vulnerability with insecurity and I equate insecurity with lack of money. So if you're like me, then that lack of money kind of makes you feel more vulnerable <laughs> and that, that may be where you're at right now. I agree with Val that there is some sort of a transformation that's due to take place this year. And I believe that when you, when you can go within and trust your self, trust your messages, trust your own intuition, you will release yourself from the prison of that insecurity. Because what I'm seeing right now is that you feel trapped there's a cycle going on that you need to break and you don't know how to break it. Well, it's all within you. All the answers are within you. And it's not going to be, I think in this year, it's not going to be terribly hard for you to break it. It doesn't, it doesn't take a big, um, you know, superhuman act to break this cycle. What it does take is a little bit of discipline, a little bit of saying, I'm going to really focus on uh, maybe going within, maybe connecting with my higher self, maybe trusting my intuition, maybe trying to listen to my guides, whatever it is, it's an, it's an internal transformation that's going to go on. And this is kind of the big deal that you're here for in this lifetime. There's a bunch of stuff that once you believe that you are it. You don't have to prove it to anybody. You don't have to take another class. You don't have to, you know, earn a certain salary to be the most important person in your life and to be a trustworthy person and to be a secure person and to have everything that you want. So I know that's kind of a tall order, but <laughs> I think this is the year that you're going to do it. And believe me, just starting with baby steps of just, you know, that decision that I made yesterday, that was a good decision. You know, the decision to stop on my way home from work and fill up the car with gas, that was a good decision. My decision to take my lunches all week because I don't know how much money I'm going to have next weekend, that was a good decision. And just begin trusting your decisions in small ways and pretty soon you'll be trusting them in larger ways. And all the time that you're doing those little decisions, Take time out to connect to your higher self, to your guides and angels, to your galactic guides. Literally, Sarah, whoever will listen to you. <laughs> Just 
talk to them and you'll start getting messages back from them. And that, although that's really going within, that is what is going to free you and, and break these bonds that you feel, this prison that you feel that you're in, because it's of your own making. And so you have the power to break it. So yeah, that's what I have. Good luck. I hope that helps. Okay. So let's see. We're on to BD. And okay. Why have I felt blocked for a number of years? Thank you. Who's this? Who's reading this? Uh, you and Marina. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Did I not? Did I not say who was doing them? I'm sorry. No, I, I didn't. I, I think I spaced out Val. I didn't hear Val answer the question you guys were talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, she did. Okay. Uh, why have I felt blocked for a number of years? You know, I feel BD. I feel the he a heaviness around you. So, I understand that you definitely do feel blocked. But you need to. Um, The blockage, I don't I don't know if it's for yourself, if you're concerned for yourself or if you're concerned for others. I kind of get a feeling like you've been concerned about others. I don't know if it's a health situation or a financial situation, but you're feeling, you're worried. You're worried about somebody else. And that is definitely affecting you and making you feel blocked and making this just this is heaviness. You're carrying so much... Uh, stuff on your shoulders that you don't need to because having that feeling and going through that process is not going to solve the problem and uh in order to get unblocked you need to get freed up so you need to just change your thinking about whatever it is that's kind of bringing you down wearing on your mind of uh whether it's you or somebody else i do feel like it's possibly both but i definitely there's somebody else out there that you're feeling very concerned about. So if you could let that go and um, focus more on, on yourself of just the feeling good and peaceful about things, but also giving to not necessarily this person you're worried about, but just giving to, of yourself to others, that in itself help, will help you lighten up. Um, you know, it can just be a small thing just helping somebody out or, you know, listening to somebody else, doing something like that. So you kind of get out of your own, uh, your own situation, your own head, get, get out of your own head, get out of your way, own way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Get out of your own way and then things lighten up and uh, you can, you know, if this blockage has been going on for a long time, which apparently it has several years, um, yeah, just you need to just let that go. You can't change it by worrying about something and stressing yourself out and blocking yourself because that you know stress is a big blocking problem for everybody. You know, and sometimes you just tend to hold on to it. You don't mean to. Um, and I do see, you know, once you do this and once you figure out who it is you're worried about or why this is on your mind so much that you can just let it go, you you just, you feel free. You just feel free. And then you can deal with the situation much better once you've removed that fear and concern and worry about whatever it is is on your mind. And I don't know if I explained that well at all, but. You that, did. You explained that really well. Okay, good. Because I, I think that that will help. So Marina, what do you got? Yeah, what I I start off with the Gypsy Queen, and she is all about karma and self assessment. So it feels to me like the reason that there are blockages is, or at least you feel that there's blockages, is that you're um, you're not really putting enough value on yourself. You're allowing someone else to determine what your value is. And intuitively, you know that that's not right. So you are kind of, um, 
you are doing that self-assessment where you're thinking, well, am I, aren't I? You're kind of going back and forth. And anytime that you, um, you're not paying attention to what it is that your higher self is telling you, which is no, no, what you're hearing about yourself isn't true. It's coming from that other person's perspective. And when you're, when you're not listening to that, it's, the universe just reconfirms the blockage, right? It, it's like you you manifest what you believe. So if you, um, you're you not really listening to your higher self and you're telling your higher self that, no, no, it's, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing this blockage and it has been going on for quite some time. The, what the universe hears is, oh, she wants to experience blockage on a, you know, yearly basis. So um, I, I do agree with Cleo in that a, a change in the perspective of your thinking. Um, if you're hearing someone say things about your, you that you know are not true, you know that they don't sit right, you have a right to express that and say, no, that's not true. That may have been true in the past. It's not true now. And I think once you <clears throat> um, once you kind of realize that you you have um, people around you who are um, who are supportive of you, um, the people that I would consider as being part of your your coven here, is that's when you're going to get your um, a good insight into what your purpose, what your motivation is. And your motivation is to uh, to move forward, to be creative, to um, to kind of be like the sisterhood of the, of the Silk Road. And this is all about wanderlust travel. This is all about learning, um, you know, doing doing things that bring you good fortune, being being fortunate in the things that you have. So I think that yeah, this this is a a, a karmic lesson in learning to, um, to kind of be your own best advocate and to say no, that does not ring true with me. It may have, in the past, it doesn't anymore. So speak your truth, girlfriend. Nice. So I got nice. my, yeah. Oh, can I good. just say one thing to the general audience? It's just something that I have used if you're feeling stuck no matter what the reasons are no matter what they are because they can be deep like marina and cleo have pointed out but if you want to just shake it up and stir up the energy to get it broken up a little bit go upstairs in your closet and <laughs> take a lot of those clothes you don't wear down to to the um you know thrift store and donate them Go into your bookshelf and get rid of all those old books you don't read anymore because more knowledge will come to you. More things. So go through your house. All the knickknackies. Take food that you're not eating out of the pantry and give it to the food um, banks in your neighborhood. This is going to shake up so much energy because, you know, yeah. the universe abhors a va vacuum. It's going to suck in so many good things coming your way. So, yeah, if you're feeling stuck, that's just yeah. my quick fix. It hasn't solved the other stuff, but it will break it up, <laughs> break up the pattern. Yeah. Well, into bite-sized pieces. Yeah, make it bite-sized. <laughs> Great, great advice, Val. Great yeah, advice. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thank you, everybody, for, for your uh, answers on that. Now, um, let me go back up here. Uh, the next question is going to be me and Gerald. And then I was going to say um, we're past an hour. Um, so I don't think we're going to get all of these questions answered. But um, if we could make maybe Carol Lamb's question, the last one, because I know she was really anxious to get her question answered. So it'll be um, me and Gerald for Bebo. And then if uh, Val and Cleo can do um, Carol Lamb. How's that? Does that sound right for everybody? everybody well, and then that? maybe if uh, Marina wants to help Val and I out on that too. Okay, very good. 
All right. So Gerald, here we go. Here is Bebo. And um, I've, I've been shuffling on this and I want to say, now she's saying, if you could read on this for me, please, if I move back to my home state, will everything work out for me? Thank you. Well, it's pretty broad to ask that everything works out for you. I really hope that it does, but let's be realistic here. This is life on earth that we're talking about. But I got to say, you got some really good cards. I don't know if this is imminent or not, but once you start actually taking steps to do the move, you know, wrapping things up in the state you're currently in and then starting up things in the next state, it's going to go fast. It's going to be a pretty, pretty quick move because I think you've basically made the decision to do it. Um, if you want a job, there's a job waiting for you. Uh, uh, if you are, if you have a partner and that partner is somebody who's good with money, they're going to be happy with the move. If you're single, then you're going to be fine with your money. Um, so I've got security. I've got working with others. So there's some sort of a plan of um, maybe old friends or something, or maybe you can get back into a situation of where you um, had employment before, or maybe this is a volunteer group. I don't know. But your lifestyle there when you move back is going to feel very comfortable and it's going to be very healthy for you. There's a lifestyle there for you that is really much better than the lifestyle that you're in now. So that's just one of probably, you probably have a million other reasons why you wanted to move back. Um, but that's a, just yet another one. And uh, the Oracle card that I pulled for you is a uh, karmic board clearing, energetic clearing, rewrite your story, live your truth. So perhaps this is an opportunity to, you know, I don't know how many years it's been since you were in that other in your home state, but you're a different person probably now when you're moving back and people will probably assume that you're the same person. So this is your chance to set your boundaries, present yourself the way you want to be presented in your most current form to achieve and work towards goals that perhaps you were unable to work towards when you lived there before, but lots of possibilities are there. So uh, resist the temptation to slip back into old habits and old lifestyles and old relationships that are not terribly uh, productive for you now. And use this as an opportunity to, um, you know, be your authentic self, live your authentic life, even though you're in a very, very comfortable, familiar environment. And I'm sure that the, I know, uh, well, maybe I dreamed this, but, um, I drove through a town that I hadn't been in for a very long time. And it, I realized that it had been probably more than five years since I'd driven through that town. And then I was surprised that like, oh, there's a new gas station and there's a new drugstore and there's a new, you know, shopping center. Of course, these things change all over the place. You change too. So you don't have to be the same old, same old when you go back to your state. And I think you should go. It looks like a really good move health-wise, money-wise, and just karma-wise. So go for it. Um, and uh, I have to say, Colleen, I, I have a lot of similar cards, <laughs> slightly different positions because um, part, of, part of what you're doing is, is you're standing your ground so that you can start making the steps to do this. You're, you're, you're making sure that you are keeping your money in order so that the move can be as comfortable as possible. Uh, um, and that's an important thing. That's the, that's what you're, what you're doing. Um, the environment that you're creating is one of definitely taking new actions and new ways of thinking about yourself Mm. and who you are now um, because, you know, I have, because I have the page of swords with the three of wands. Nice. So it's a nice blend at those two cards. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, the, the, the thing that you need to avoid is depending on other people to help you do it because they're not going to quite understand the people who, where you live now, like you and appreciate you, they are going to miss you. So, uh, you know, understand that some people may, um, but 
with that in mind, what's really important for you to um, to, to solve is, is how are you going to remove the things that are preventing you from being happy where you are? Because remove those because you don't want to take those with you energetically so that it's a beautiful and fresh start. I have the death card with that. So it's definitely a transformation. Uh, and it feels very, very, um, it feels, it feels very solid, especially because as, as Colleen said, you've been thinking about this for a while and now you're starting to put that in action and manifesting it. So be careful of how, be thoughtful of how you manifest it, not just what you're doing here, but understand and, and understand why you're doing them here for when you get there. Um, because in the, in the transition, it's going, you know, anytime you move, you uproot yourself, it's, it's, um, it can be a complete and utter, um, cluster. It can be very overwhelming. I, you knew what I was going to say, Val, and I didn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah. However, here's the thing to, to remember and, and, um, Bebo, I have the queen of cups. This is someone who is looking within herself. She's looking into that cup, but look at her face. She is pleased with what she sees. She's content. She's happy. It's helping her third eye open. So I, I think it's good. And um, the Oracle card that I got for you is purification. I mean, this is great. This is, this is quite beautiful. So there you go. Thanks, Bebo. Great. And then uh, I guess all of you, or Val and Marina, and there's Cleo, uh, will do uh, Carol Lamb's question. Yeah. So, Carol, um, I have, uh, there's a, I can see how some of these things, I think you've had your feelings hurt and probably some things have sort of happened in the last few days to make you feel bad <laughs> in general, but don't be so hard on yourself. Keep your heart open to yourself and appreciate yourself for everything that you do every day. And um, really what's really happening is your vibration is rising and you're just a little bit out of sorts and you can't quite put your finger on it, but it, none of it feels good. So they're just telling you, just maintain the focus that you've always had on all the great positive things. Let go of all those shit. I'm sorry, shitty things that have happened to you. Just let them go. Let them roll off your back like a, a duck's back and listen to the whispers within that beautiful voice of your guides um, because they are cheerleading you this whole way like crazy. Your vibration is rising and you're manifesting like crazy. This is the truth. So no matter how, you know, crummy the last few days have been, this is what's really happening. So, you know, you're going to be great. You're doing great. Keep the focus. Let go of what happened <laughs> and listen to your guides. They're talking like crazy to you. And, um, so congratulations. I hope that helps. And Carol, I've got to totally agree with Val. You just, you know, you're being too hard on yourself. I mean, something has not gone the way you expected in the last few days. And um, you're trying to, you're trying to take it all on yourself. You don't need to do that. You need to be more compassionate towards yourself, more loving towards yourself and, and just realize, yeah, it, it, it was a bummer. It was a bummer, but you know, you're going to get through whatever it was. And um, it's a good thing that you are a positive person because I know that you can understand what I'm saying to you about just don't be so hard on yourself and, and things are going to clear up. Plus this is a weird Mercury retrograde right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the, one of those times where it's just a tougher Mercury retrograde for everybody. So that might be adding to the crap that's going on. Yeah. In the days. 
Oh, yeah. Great, Carol. It's going to clear up. And uh, you've got all the tools it takes to get beyond this stuff and, uh, you know, just be more loving and compassionate towards yourself. And um, things are things are going to get better. Things are going to get better for everybody. But, you know, just know that it's not just you having some crappy days. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? Sometimes having a crappy day is necessary to remind us of how blessed we really are. Because sometimes we tend to forget. Things are going really, really well. And we start off being very grateful. And then we anticipate that all is going to go well. And we forget, um, even with our best intentions, to say, I'm grateful, to say thank you. So sometimes a crappy day comes along just to remind us that that's what we need to do. Um, what I got for you was, and this is from the uh, the Starseed Oracle, was star bathing. And that is all about um, um, light body. That is about uh, transmission activation and so on. So I do agree with Val that, you know, your, your, your vibration is, is rising. I also got the void. And the, the void is... Uh, is asking you to just stop and embrace where you are right now. Um, don't don't put out any expectations. Just embrace where you are right now, and and know know that it's going to be okay. You don't need to know how, when, where. Just stay in that sort of that that cosmic womb and say no, it it's going to be fine. There we go. Because ultimately, you're looking for the cosmic heart. And um, what that is about, it, it's about devotion. It's about potency. It's about making your life a, um, a moving prayer, a living prayer. You want to be the, the guiding light for, for someone else. So <clears throat> just remember, sometimes a bad day is just a bad day. It, it's not a sign of anything other than that, there are uh, we are in retrograde, so that is going to mess with with your emotions, and it's going to mess with the way that the things go. Allow yourself to step back from it and say, oh, "Okay, well, you know what? I'm taking the day off today. I'm just going to do me. I'm just I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to read a good book. I'm going to paint my toes. I'm going to eat chocolate and." That's it. So, yeah, I hope that resonates, Carol. And, and Carol says that it's family legal stuff, which mm. makes me stay in 3D and messes with my meditations. Mm -hmm. And oh, Carol, boy, can I, I totally understand what you're talking about. And it's really hard to remove yourself from that because, especially if you've got attorneys involved in legal stuff because you don't you can only do so much and you've read the law and you know and whatever it is you're talking about you know you're right and you can't figure out yeah. why do these other people can't just step in and say yeah this is the way it should go um but that's the law you know mm -hmm. and so the best thing to do with that is you put it yeah, I feel like you put as much into this, much thought and research into it as possible. So now that you've done that, let it go for just a while, just a few mm -hmm. hours even. Give yourself a break on this because legal stuff just is, you'll be ripping your hair out. I mean, it just makes you crazy. So yes. hang in there. Yeah. And grateful you are not facing court on Monday like some people we know. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Where are you going? Okay. Well, thank you for all those wonderful answers. And I'm just going to toss my cat over here. There she goes. Okay. Right. <laughs> He's getting ready, folks. He's getting ready. He's going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just being a cat. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Look at the way Colleen's looking at me. It's like, quit it, Gerald. <laughs> so, I'm like, so now I'm going to do it again. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm try I'm trying to, you know, be a good pet owner and not just, you know, smack her and throw her across the room, but oh. you know, I cuz she's not doing really anything wrong per se. She's just messing up my camera, so I can't really be mad at her, but it's all good. You know. Yeah, don't don't smack kitties. No. Oh, they, these cats I could never even get yeah. read because they're all over the place. And but um, this was good. These were a good bunch of readings. Thank they you were, guys. Very yes. much. Great readings. They're and really a lot good. of readings that are um, general enough that I saw people yes. in chat talking mm -hmm. about, the, oh, I'll take that or that resonates mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. That's why oh, yeah. I love doing readings like this. Yeah, me yeah. too. Which reminds me that we have another show that's going to be coming up at the end of this month that also will be doing readings for people that they just might want to uh, check out. So let me just play the little uh, trailer for that. <laughs> yes. Do it. Get ready to receive the knowledge. We know before you ask, because we are the real psychics of YouTube. Who are the real psychics of YouTube? What's the matter? Don't know? Because you're not psychic? That's okay. The real psychics of YouTube are psychic enough for all of you. This is where we answer questions before you even know what they are, and the answers will blow your mind. Get ready for another episode of The Real Psychics of YouTube. Yay! <laughs> oh, yay! So that's going to be premiering April 20th. So everybody uh, mark your calendars and... Uh, <laughs> It's going to be really fun. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a little bit tongue in cheek, but the readings will be real. Yep. So yes. I hope everybody will tune in for that. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so wow, this is great. This has been a very nice, relaxed show. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. this. I loved looking at all the comments. They're really <laughs> nice comments. It's great. Yes. And uh, thank you for letting me blab on about my experience with the solar eclipse because it was very meaningful for me. <laughs> that's beautiful. Good. Yeah, that's great. And, um, yeah, that's great. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, I look forward to going through the comments and seeing what else I missed, you know, what else you saw, what, yeah. what you wrote in there because I missed a lot of it. But um, thank you for being here. I hope that our readings were helpful. I hope that you got something out of them. And, I, and like Gerald was saying, uh, there probably are things for you in readings for other people too. That's always the case. There's, I know that there's a lot in the readings for me from all the readings, you know, there's always something that I can learn from all, pretty much every reading that is done on this show. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next time now let me see if i can set this up so that i don't screw it up Thanks, everyone and all right we're gonna be going now <laughs> good night